CyberDog's Doc Builder gives you a tool to create custom access to the internet. You, in it, you can include graphics, text, and internet components of CyberDog. So let's begin by going to our scrapbook and including a graphic. So we'll call this Willie's Internet, and we'll start by putting his picture in there. So now we've got his picture. We'll put some text in here. So we'll grab the text tool and put a little text window in this document. And now I can type in Willie's Internet. And we'll go use the text tool to make it large and pretty color. And now the two things that Willie needs to spend most of his time doing on the internet is doing searches and reading his mail. So we'll take this icon for the Yahoo homepage and simply drag it into the document and that will embed the CyberDog web browser pointed to the Yahoo search page. And this is the live browser here, not just a picture of it. So once we have the browser we can go scroll through this window to view the components of the page and we can click on any of these items to go there. Now the other thing Willie spends his time doing is reading his mail. So we'll take advantage of the CyberDog Windows menu to get our notebook and take an icon for his mail and drag it in to our document so he can read his mail as well. So here we have the CyberDog mail trays and again we can scroll through these and read our mail within this window just as we can scroll through the Yahoo web browser here. Another component that's very useful is the CyberDog notebook. So we'll go take our notebook and we'll put a little notebook over here in the corner. So we can drag the icon from the Yahoo page in here or we can go get icons for our notebook and drag those in as well for any of the places that we want to go. The last tool that CyberDog provides that's very useful is the button tool. So we can go put a button down here that we can link to the Apple website or to any other website or internet service that you want. Again, we'll go to the scrapbook and get a picture. So I'll go pick a familiar icon here. And now if I simply drag the Apple site onto this button, it will link it. So when I click on this, it will go connect to the Apple website. So you have the capability of either creating buttons that link to information or putting that information in directly as we did with the Yahoo site. CyberDog provides a robust mail system that gives you a lot of control over reading and sending email from the internet. To begin with, you can have multiple mail trays, so you can have multiple internet email accounts, and you can create folders that allow you to organize your mail into as many categories as you need. CyberDog provides mail handlers that allow you to filter and sort your mail so that you can automatically control how your mail appears. So we're going to create a handler here called Awards. I'm carrying on some correspondence with somebody about awards, and it would be nice if I didn't have to go find that mail in my in-basket or my out-basket. I could put it all together. So I'm going to put it in a mail tray I've created called Awards, and I'm going to apply this to both outgoing and incoming mail. So I could apply this if I wanted to the subject or the from, or in this case to any field, so that all of my correspondence will now be organized for me automatically in this folder called Awards that I've created. CyberDog provides a robust search facility. It indexes all your incoming and outgoing mail, the entire text of the message, and gives you the capability of searching very rapidly through and providing a relevancy ranked result for that. So we can go look for some mail I sent about a demo in Australia um, next week. And this will look through not only the headers but the full text of the mail messages to find any mail that matches that. It will then display all messages that match these words and give me an indication of their relevancy. Here is the result, and within this you can see that the first one has a full bar that says that probably is the best match, and the others have a very small bar. And if we scroll across the screen, you can see that, in fact, the first item matched all three, and the others only matched two of those. So it really is a relevancy ranking. Let's take a look at this message. And this shows that CyberDog supports an internet standard called MIME for Mail that allows you to include style text and graphics within your mail message, as well as links to internet 
um, addresses. So in this case, I've put in the Yahoo site and the Apple computer website. And these are live, so if I double click on it, it will go find the CyberDog web browser part and connect to the internet and display that web page. So you have a very rich way within your mail of being able to include not only text and graphics, but internet links live within your mail as well. Let's send a mail message and I'll show you how easy it is to add style text and graphics within your communication from eWorld to other components. So I'll go here and open letterhead. In this case, um, because you can add style text and graphics, you can create your own stationery. This is from um, somebody you may recognize called Mona. And we've dragged her picture in here and put in a little style text. And we may want to send a message here. So we'll say, here's the Yahoo site address. And we can make this big and pretty. So we'll go pick a size and make it large. And we'll go pick a color and make it beautiful. And then we can simply drag an internet address in, again, from our desktop or a log or a notebook or anything else. Enclosures can also be added. So if I want to send a file, I simply drag it in as well. And it's that easy to put in style text as well as enclosures that point to internet addresses or other information within your mail. CyberDog lets you send these messages with styled text and graphics to other CyberDog users. It also has a capability called plain text that lets you send email messages to anyone with an email account. Here is CyberDog with a worldwide web page brought up, and we notice that inside of the web page we actually have an embedded Java application. The problem with Java today is that Java only lives inside of your web browser. Well, one part of CyberDog and OpenDoc is a Java wrapper that actually allows us to take the information that today is only found in a website and actually integrate it inside of our document. So here it is inside of CyberDog. What I've done is I've actually created a WAVE document with our Java part embedded. So here I actually see the exact same Java application running inside of my word processor. This allows teachers or educational institutions to add their own lesson plans around information they find on the World Wide Web. This demonstrates how we can take information that we find on the internet and embed it inside of our document to enhance our educational experience. Here's a document for a chemistry class at Tufts University. And what I'm going to do is take a couple Netscape plugin models that I found on the web and you can drag them directly inside of your document. So here we have a live animation of a particular spiroprill molecule inside of our document. We're also capable of integrating Java information inside of our document as well. How we do that is we take our Java applet viewer, drag it inside of our document, and then we go and find either a URL or an applet and drag it directly on side of our applet viewer. It then goes and will open the Java applet inside of a pane. So here's an example of a yet another molecule, this time using our Java wrapper. This is going to be a demonstration of a new product by Digital Harbor called Wave and integrating third parties live objects inside of it. What we'll do is we'll go to the desktop and select a picture file, drag it into our document, and we notice that the picture appears. Also, if notice how the text automatically reflows. If we click and make the picked file active, we get a new menu bar with picture controls that we can go and modify the size of the picked image, make it smaller, larger, whatever. We can then select a table from the desktop, drag it into our document, and this is yet another live object created by a separate company called Corda, and it allows us to display table information inside of our document. If I want to chart the information inside of my table, I'll go back out to my desktop and take a product by Adrenaline Corporation, drag it into my document. I can then scroll down, and I can also resize the element. I then want to highlight the information inside of my table and drag that on top of my charting tool and I notice that I automatically will chart the information. When I select the table you notice that I also my menu bars change. I'll close a couple menus and we notice that we do have control over the graphing part that I can zoom in and out. I can also rotate the object just by clicking and dragging. If we want to dress up the chart we can actually go back to the desktop 
take a rocks file, drag it on the background of the chart, and we notice that we've retexture mapped the rocks. We can also open our scrapbook file and select a 3DMF document. So in our scrapbook, it's a full 3DMF document. We'll take that, drag it on top of the pieces of the chart, let go of our mouse button, and we notice that we've remapped that with palm trees. Once again, I'll zoom in on the information, zoom out, and we can also rotate it. So different parts or live objects created by multiple vendors integrated together inside of a single document.